Hi there, this is Anmesh again from Pix Imperfect. How are you doing? I hope your creative journey is going fantastic and it is that time of the year to update, not actually the time of the year, but just another time to update the Pix Imperfect compositing panel. Thank you so much for trusting it. And this, my friend, is the Feb 2023 update. We have got some exciting updates for you, some housekeeping updates for you, and some bug fixes. But before we get on to the updates, I want to sincerely thank you for keeping the feedback coming. You have made it all possible because of your feedback. We have worked on these features. We have improved some features. We have made some changes to certain features and fixed some bugs. So thank you so much for the feedback. And if you do like the plugin, if you do like the experience, do leave us a review. That helps a lot. Links are in the description. Now, the first update is faster color match. Now, we have heard you. We have listened to you. Now, some of you have said that the color match is a little slow and it can be a little more pressure for your computer to handle. So what we have done is that we downscale the image to 500 pixels because it's not going to make any difference when we try to match the colors because we usually take average colors. So we downsample the image then we sample the colors and then we use that to color match. So it has made the color matching process much faster. So for example, in this case, let us first remove the background by going to masking and simply click on remove the background. It does everything for you. You can refine the edges, many settings for us to do that. Now, in order to color match, all you need to do is to choose the layer from which you want to copy the colors and go to matching because we're going to be matching. Now, in here, in my interface, everything looks large because I've scaled my desktop so it's easy for you to see. Otherwise, the desktop and the icons are not that large and you have a lot of space to deal with. You don't have to scroll so much. None of that. But I just have scaled my monitor for you to see it clearly. Okay, so let's click on copy right here. It copies the colors. As you can see, it's much faster than before. And now you can come back to the portrait and just apply it with curves right there and it's much faster than before. And it automatically does that. I'm not speeding up the video and that takes us to our next update, which is gradient map is now defaulting to 50% opacity. I don't know what we were thinking to set it at 100%. So hear me out. So let us say you have matched it with the curve and 100% opacity is way too much. So we're gonna decrease it to about, let's say 80%. Okay, by the way, when you're working with opacity and when you press the numbers, eight will set it to 80%, two will set it to 20%, but then it's not doing any of that. You know why? Because the brush tool is selected and the opacity at the top is being changed. So right now, if I press seven, it is 70%. So you wanna make sure that you have the move tool or any other tool selected. Now, when you press eight, this opacity changes right over here. Now, as for the new change, we have already copied the color. All we have to do is to press this button. Now, as you can see, the default opacity is 50% and it works most of the time. Many of the cases, you just have to reduce it, let's say 20% or 30% and see how that works. By the way, if you press two buttons faster consecutively, it will set those numbers right here. So if you press two, it will set it to 20. If you press four, it will set it to 40. But if you press two, three fast, it's gonna set it to 23, okay? So let's set it to 24 and this kind of works. By the way, if you already didn't know, let's say you want to blur the background. So let's select the background layer and just click on field blur in the depth of field section. And this is also gonna be in the matching section because we are matching the depth of field. If you click on that and apply a field blur like this, one of the good features that we have tried to include is that it automatically converts the layer into a smart object so you don't have to do any of that process. So if you want to go back and change the values later, you can just double click right here and change the values to whatever you like and go back. So everything right here is non-destructive. The next update is that the alignment or the arrangement function now also works with masked objects. So you don't have to convert them into smart objects or this panel doesn't have to convert them into a smart object for them to work. Earlier, what used to happen is that all of these layers that you see, by the way, these are different sized layers and all of the fishes are masked. So this is one, this is another fish, fish three, fish four, and all of them are masked. All of them are of different sizes. Earlier, what used to happen for them to be arranged properly, each one of them would be converted into a smart object like this, and the mask would be applied. So if you wanted to play with the mask, you would have to open this, you would have to play with the mask right here, improve the mask and then get back. It could have been a hassle. So right now, even if your layer has a mask, the alignment arrangement feature works. So select all the layers. I chose the first one, held the shift key, chose the last one, everything in a row is selected. Now, if you go to arrangement and if you align horizontal, you'll see that even though they are masked, they work 
and even though they were of different sizes, sizes are arranged and now everything is just uniform. You can align them vertically, you can align them horizontally, and then you can move them around. I'm so sorry, you can select each layer and move them around to whatever location you like. You can resize them up to you, but the update is it works with masks. Now here's the next super cool update. Might not be a big thing for you, but we are super pumped about this. So when you do arrange, the objects would now be arranged in the same order as the layers. So what do I mean by that? Have a look at this fish. This is fish number one, fish number two, three, and four. All right. Now let us arrange them, select all of them. And if we align them horizontally, you would see one, two, three, four, are in order. So one is right here, two is right here, three is right here, four is right here. So they are arranged in the same order as the layer. So let's say we change the order. Fish two goes up, fish three comes down. Now let us arrange them again. Select all the layers and align them horizontally. See? Those two fishes change positions. So simple small update. I was just too excited about it. The next update is regarding perspective adjustment. Now when you reset any perspective changes, the size is maintained. Earlier, it was kind of difficult for us to do. But right now, the developers have cracked it. So when you go to the perspective section, and if you just turn it right, and when you reset it, it maintains the size. Earlier, it was not doing so. So if you move it to the top, turn it to the top, reset it, there you go. By the way, while we're at it, you can increase the factor. Now, as you increase the factor, now when you turn, it turns more, okay? If you decrease the factor by clicking once, it turns less. So that's what factor is. Now, whenever you're masking something in Photoshop and you want to check how good the mask is using contrast layers, you can change their colors in real time. Earlier, you would choose the colors and then you would apply it and then you could see the colors. Now it happens real time. Let me explain. Let us say we mask this lady. So here's the before, here's the after, masked out. And you want to see how good the mask or the selection is. So you would go to the masking section right here and you can choose contrast layers. Choose white. It looks good in white. It looks terrible in gray. And you could check any color you want by clicking on this button and picking any color and hitting OK. Then the color would apply. But right now, you can change the colors real time and you do see a preview as you are choosing that color. So that is the minor change. So let's say you want this one, hit OK. The mask is not proper. By the way, let's go with gray. And let's improve the mask. First of all, the first thing I would do is checking if everything is selected. I would go to black and see that the mask is absolutely all right. There's nothing that is left out. That's fine. Now only we have to remove the halos. Let's go to gray. There are so many ways to remove halos in the remove halos section. And we have discussed it in the main video. And there's also help text. You can simply turn on the help text right here. Now it's going to tell you how to use each function. By the way, see this new icon right here. That's also a new addition. It just tells you if you hold the alt, what would happen. So for example, we were dealing with removing halos. So there's a description, there's a video link. So for this image, I think decontaminate colors would work. So I select the subject layer and click on decontaminate colors and it's fixed. Now this, my friend, is a minor fix. Earlier when you used to create perspective lines, they would be in pixels, not in shapes. So right now, if you create perspective lines, they are in vector shapes. So we have to adjust the perspective of the subject with that of the background. So first of all, we turn off the subject mask. And just above the subject layer, we can, or the group, we can just create some perspective lines. So let us go ahead and for the subject, it's green. You can change this color according to you to whatever you want. So it would be that color. So let's set it to green and let's click on subject. So right now when you create these lines, you would notice that they are vector shapes. Okay. So we have created them for the subject. Let's create them for the background as well. So you can turn off the subject layer up to you. And for the background layer, let's create them. Okay, that's pretty much all right. Now all we have to do is to select the subject one and select the subject as well by holding the controller command. Make sure both of them are selected. Press controller command T and just bring them, just match them. Whoops, there you go, okay. Pretty all right. And now you can turn on the mask of the subject. 
So hold the shift key, click on the mask to turn that on. And now you can just delete these lines. So click on delete or you can turn them off or simply delete them up to you. So now the perspective is matching. Now do keep in mind this is just a rule of thumb and doesn't perfectly work all the time. So you have to make some minor adjustments because just a change in the angle of the camera or the lens can distort the results. So in this case, I think she would be a little smaller. Press Ctrl or Command D and I'm gonna place the anchor point right here. I hold the Alt key or the Option key and clicked on there to place the anchor point there. Now when I resize it by holding the Alt or Option, it resizes from that area. So there you go, this seems to be about right. Just a little bit of adjustment and this is fine. The perspective is matched. The next update is a big one, a huge one actually, and one of my favorites. Now when you press adapt to selection, and if you don't have a selection, it will adapt to the canvas, which is fantastic. How many times has it happened to you that you drag and drop an image? For example, let me make this bigger for you so that I can see. Now keep in mind, this is in JPEG, not JPG. So I don't know if this is a problem with Photoshop or this image format. This is an Adobe stock photo. If I drag and drop it, it just doesn't adjust to the canvas size. It just doesn't, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You have the Piximperfect compositing plugin. Now, when you click on Adapt to Selection, it will just fit to Canvas. Now, if you're not sure how Adapt to Selection works, if you make any selection and click on Adapt to Selection, the image will fit to that selection. That's how it works. So, for example, this is what I made. It will just fit to it. But if I don't make any selection now with the update, it will just fit to Canvas. Now, it is not always the case that all of the images would do this. So, for example, this is JPG, if I bring it in right here. This is from Pexels, by the way. She has an incredible smile, don't you think so? Anyway, so this has fit to the canvas. Now, not all the time you drag and drop your images from the Finder or File Explorer. Sometimes they're just open in another document. For example, let us open this image in a different document. And you have this duplicate layer. You just copied the layer by selecting the layer, pressed Ctrl or Command C, and then you pasted it right over here. Again, as you can see, it is just not fitting. You would just click on Adapt to Selection, and there you go, it fits. Also, when you mask, this becomes very helpful. So let's say you masked this lady right over here, and we're gonna click on any of these three tools right there, Select and Mask, sorry, Select Subject, right over here at the top. It does a pretty good job and we're gonna click on the mask button right here. And also let's say we removed a little bit from the bottom, just like this. So in the mask, we filled it with black, all right? Now when you select that layer and you press adapt to selection, see, it considers the mask and adapts the image again. In the previous version, we had a button to remove the subject. If we clicked on it, it would select the subject and remove it using the content of fill. But we found out from your feedback is most of you were not using that. Instead, you were holding the Alt key and keep in mind, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the Remove Subject button, it would rather separate the subject. So it would make two copies. So here will be the background. Here will be the subject. It will remove the subject from the background and separate it on a different layer. So we have made the change where the default is now separate the subject and if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on it, it would remove the subject. So just a slight change right there. So if you scroll down, you will find separate subject instead. So this is something we usually use the most and what it does is that, as you can see, it has separated the subject. Let me make it bigger for you, large thumbnails. Here's the background. This has no subject on it. On top, you have just the subject. So it has simply separated the subject. Now, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, it would remove the subject. And by the way, if you turn on Help right here and look at it, have a look. It tells you right there. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key, it would only remove the subject. So let's hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on Separate Subject. It would just make a copy, keep a backup for you and just remove the subject if that's something you're looking for. And that brings us to our next feature. That is the green. We have made certain changes to it. So let's say right now, we have green on the subject, we have green on the background. If we want to blur the background even more, the green would go away. Now, I understand inside Blur Gallery, there are options to add green, but if you want to do it outside, sometimes you might want to add green not at the top. Maybe you want to custom add it at a particular place. So let's say you separated the subject by clicking on separate subject right here, and then you want to blur the background. So with the background layer selected already, you would just click on Field Blur, 
you blurred it a lot, like this, hit OK. Now the subject has noise, but the background does not have noise. But if you want to add noise to the background, right here in the layers, earlier what used to happen is that if you go to big screen right here, inside of the structure, you can click on the plus, it would add green at the very top. And there was a reason for it. And the reason is you add green as the finishing touch to bring all of the elements together. But in this case, you just want to add green to the background. So how do you do that? Of course, you can bring the layer down. Now, instead of doing all that, all you have to do is to select the layer on top of which you want the green and you hold the Alt key or the Option key. And then when you click on plus, it adds the green layer on top of that. Now you have green on the subject and the background. And of course, you can adjust it from right here. Less green, more green, it's up to you. But that's a little change right there. The next update is simply picking a color for highlights and shadows is now easier. You can directly pick it from the image. Earlier, it was not that possible because by default, it would select the mask. So right now, forget about it, just update it. If you want to paint in the... If you want to paint in the highlights, you would simply click on colored lights right over there. And you can pick whatever color you want from the image. Earlier, it was not possible because by default, it would select the mask of the solid color adjustment layer and that would create a problem. We have rearranged the order a little bit. So right now you can pick it directly from the image. So let's say this is the highlight. I want to pick this, hit OK. And now all you got to do is to just paint. That's all. So we're just going to zoom in, paint in the highlights like this. Now, I'm doing a very fast job right here. Of course, you can change the colors later, a little bit here and there, but you get the point. Now, I would go right here and change the color again to this one, make it a little bit more saturated, and then also take it away from the shadows by double-clicking on the right-hand side of the layer and taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold the Alt-Q, the Option key, click on it to break it apart. And there you go. And for the shadows, you click on in here and choose a darker color and just paint on the opposite side. There you go. This kind of works. So just a little bit of the light we did pretty much very quickly. You can again remove it from the highlights like this. Blend it properly. There you go. This kind of works. Okay. Just a little bit of light. Here's the before, here's the after. This was just for demo. Just wanted to show you that you can pick the colors for the lights directly from the image at the first go. I hope this one helps. The next update is simply that the awesome developers at Picture Instruments have made the plugin more robust and stable from all of the feedback that you sent us. Now, some users were reporting that their plugin was forgetting activations after a while and they would have to activate that again. We have made a change where after updates, the plugin will not forget activations. But if it does, if there are certain issues with activations, let us know. We're always there to help you, always there to fix it. The next update is very useful for users who don't have a constant internet connection or are traveling all the time. You will now be able to use the plugin for 30 days without internet connection. After 30 days, it would have to check with the server to check your license. But apart from that, you're all set for 30 days. The final update is adding minor changes to the help text, adding new links to videos, and fixing all of those minor little bugs. You can check the full list of the updates in the description. Thank you so much for checking out Piximperfect Compositing. And again, your review helps a lot. Let us know your experience. Keep coming with your feedback. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.